we have this gene and there's this worship gene, which was inserted into the human genome. We know this now because scientists have, have actually found the worship gene. You can turn it on and they can turn it actually off. And so it makes us want to worship something outside of ourselves, when in true reality, we should find the power inside. And this was inserted by the Anunnaki. That's my opinion. That's my hypothesis. But this gene has been found, but it's happened around 200,000 years ago. Now, something else happened around that same time. Chromosome number two in the human body was pulled out, fused together, and then two telomere caps were put on each end. Telomere caps have ge our genetic material that allow us ourselves to replicate. It has the biological uh, buffer material in it. Now, when the buffer material runs out, that's when your body starts the death process. Now, around 200,000 years ago is when the tablets say this occurred at the Tower of Babel incident, which made it into the modern day Bible, the Tower of Babel incident, where, where in the Bible it's God who comes back, Yahweh comes back and he sees the people building a tower into the heavens and he gets pissed off and he destroys the tower and he said, I'm, that's it, man's, life, man's years will be 120. They'll never live more than that. And I'm going to confuse their languages and separate them and spread them out all over the planet so they can't talk to each other. But in the Sumerian tablets, it was actually Enlil, who's Yahweh in the Bible. He comes back and sees us and he goes, oh man, these people are getting too smart. They're going to, they're going to realize they don't need us to rule over them. So he confused their language, taught, broke everybody up, made different languages. There's only one language at the time. Then the you know, years will be 120, shorten the lifespan. Before then, people were living for hundreds of years. Now the maximum lifespan that they found out at Harvard that a human being could live on average would be 120 if it wasn't for the poison and everything else going on. You know, it's toxicity in the foods and the atmosphere. And they discovered they started experimenting with mice and they were able to stop the degradation, degradation of the telomeres and got the mice to live three times their normal lifespan. All this information would be mind blowing information to come out if this truth was really told about our ancient past and what really happened. People would realize we've been altered, genetically modified. Our lifespans have been shortened so that we can be subjugated and ruled over. We never live long enough to really figure out what's going on. But by the time we figure it out, we're gone and another generation starts over from zero again. And so we're at this precipice now. We need to be able to pass this information on from generation to generation and teach them the real true ancient history so that we can break this, this cycle that we're in of this, of this being a boot on our neck and being ruled over by a small handful of people. Less than 100 people on this planet control 8 billion people. Less than 100 people run the lives of 8 billion people worldwide. They know what you smell, eat, taste, touch, hear, think. And they control everything you do, where you can go, where you can't go. And so for us to take back control of this planet, we need to know this ancient information. We need to know what happened in the past so we can make a better future because the past is prologue. We can't take control of this planet until that happens. And so to answer your question is this, once people understand this fundamentally, the true reality is we'll take back control of our planet. These beings, they, they don't land and walk around. They're waiting for us to grow up. I think that the ones that had subjugated us have been long gone after a last pyramid war that happened about 5,000 years ago. And the ones that are looking at us now that we see these UFOs, UAPs flying around, not all of them are, our, are there, some are ours, but the ones that are from, from other places, they're watching us and they're looking and they're saying, you know what, they're still crawling. They're not ready for us yet. When they learn how to walk, when these 8 billion people take back control of their planet and stop allowing less than 100 people to put a boot on their neck and divide them and all these divide and conquer tactics, they don't love one another, they don't, they don't respect one another, they don't respect even themselves. When they grow up past that level, they almost show up. Because in, back in the ancient times, they would show up. People were so, uh, the IQ wasn't there yet. We were just hunter-gatherers living around and we didn't have a weapon to fire back at them. Now, somebody shows up, everybody wants to try to take it out of the sky. We want to get this technology, we want to co-opt it. We want to reverse engineer it. We want to weaponize it. They look at our planet and they go, okay, they know how to split the atom, interesting. Oh, they've got weapons. Let me check out the codes on these weapons. We know this because UFOs have showed up at military mm -hmm. bases and deactivated nukes mm -hmm. in broad daylight, as testified before Congress by actual military officers and nuclear physicists. But they say, okay, well, they've got all these nukes aimed at their own planet. While they're still on the planet, with no escape hatch. So they're saying, you know, we're going to just keep looking. You know, we, we have to just monitor and look at the situation and just keep seeing how long will it be before they wake up. That's what I think is happening. And it looks like a prime directive as if they have some type of a base law that we don't understand or know about where they're not fully engaging us uh, in a way that like you're talking about, because we know when we went to the uh, Bikini Atoll, 
in the, uh, I think this was the, the, the late 40s, early 50s, and started testing weapons, nuclear weapons. We took all those uh, islanders and we moved them. And they, these people had never seen airplanes or other people before. Forget seeing airplanes. They'd never seen anybody but themselves, right? And all of a sudden, they created a cargo cult. They took reeds and sticks out of the bushes and created airplanes out of them. And they worshipped the planes. They tattooed USA on their chest. You got black guys walking around in the bush with USA on their, painted on their chest. They make fake guns out of sticks that look like, you know, AK-47s and so forth, automatic weapons. And then they sit down on these man-made runways that they've dug out and they look at the sky for hours waiting for the sky gods to bring them back more cans of spam. And I think the same thing would happen if a lot of these pe beings would just engage underdeveloped cultures that, you know, we're not ready for certain levels of understanding and technology yet in certain ways. Um, you know, you still got people running around, uh, you know, trying to steal stuff at the checkout at, uh, you know, at Walmart. I mean, it's just a certain level of IQ and maybe understanding and unconditional love that we need to have for ourselves and the planet, maybe before they just fully engage. If you like this video and you want to see more amazing content, go ahead and check out the next video on our channel.